Hi Capricorn, this is your monthly May tarot reading. We'll have five separate spreads in this monthly reading. We'll have a spread on new love, a separate spread on love in an existing relationship or marriage. I'll then do the X. Spread after that, we'll talk about your work, your business and your finances. And at the end, we'll get you an advice for the whole month of May. Please like, share and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is a new love in May. We have uh, the Ten of Swords, clarified by the Eight of Cups. We have the Fool, clarified by the Ace of Pentacles. We have the Will of Fortune. In the potential outcome, we have the King of Swords with the Ten of Cups and the Six of Swords. And we have the Devil on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Air Sign, Gemini, Libra or Aquarius. We also have uh, Aries, Sagittarius, perhaps even another Capricorn. I got to be honest with you, uh, Capricorn. This is one dramatic reading especially the beginning is very dramatic it feels like um, a change of course you know you were doing your own thing you were going about your business or you were uh, you know feeling comfortable and here comes this king of swords and things will change things will change all right so there's definitely an ending at the beginning of the story an ending somebody either you or them or perhaps both of you are leaving something or someone behind so the two of you could be together right um, you will see it or they will see it as a golden opportunity and it's going to be worth taking the risk that's how it feels <laughs> Capricorn all right so let's uh, uh, dive a little deeper, right? So got this King of Swords in the potential outcome. That's the person you're going to be dealing with or already dealing with. Um, so it could be an air sign, Gemini, Libra or Aquarius or somebody with a lot of air in their chart. If they're not an air sign, they are embracing the energy of the King of Swords, somebody who is very determined, somebody who is uh, very honest, very straightforward, gets to the point, very intelligent, right? We actually start off with the Ten of Swords clarified by the Eight of Cups. Yep, something is going to come to an end and there's going to be a departure. Somebody, either you or them or perhaps both of you are leaving something or someone behind. Perhaps uh, you are or they are already uh, involved with somebody, right? And by the way, this is not a singles reading. This is a new love reading, Capricorn. I keep mentioning it to everybody. <laughs> you know, most of you, 90% of you are single, but there's some of you are not. And uh, I'm not judging anybody. Right? So with the Ten of Swords and the Eight of Cups, you or them or both of you could be leaving someone behind. Or say you start talking to one person in early May and then this King of Swords shows up and they're so much better, so you're going to dump the other person for this King of Swords. For others of you, you could be leaving your roommates behind. Perhaps you live with roommates or you live with uh, your parents or something like that. And when this King of Swords shows up, you're going to leave them. Uh, so you could move in together with this King of Swords. For others of you, you could be leaving other people's opinion behind, right? Perhaps there's going to be people who who will tell you, oh, don't don't do anything with this King of Swords. Don't get involved in him. And you're going to tell them, you know what? Screw all of you. I know what I'm doing. And uh, another group of you with those two cards, you could be leaving your. Uh, old belief system behind. Perhaps in the past you wouldn't even consider starting anything with this King of Swords. But, uh, you know, never say never. <laughs> so anyway, right next to those two cards, the first two cards, we have uh, the Fool, clarified by the Ace of Pentacles, and then we have the Will of Fortune. Those three cards are, um, you know, links of the same chain, I guess. All those three cards should be looked at together. The Fool is a card of liberation and taking a leap of faith, taking a risk. The Ace of Pentacles is the reason because it's a golden opportunity, right? So both of you will see this as a golden opportunity and that's why it makes sense to leave something or someone behind and take a leap of faith, take a risk with this King of Swords, right? Uh, the Ace of Pentacles always comes from somebody who is ready to settle down, ready to start a family, or the Ace of Pentacles is just a long-term potential. Awesome potential. The Ace of Pentacles to me personally is, ace, is the Ace of all Aces. Okay, the Wheel of Fortune is the start of a cycle. Could be a Sagittarius, you know, but the Wheel of Fortune, you know, it's a very fortunate turn of events. The word fortune is there for a reason. The Wheel of Fortune is always good news in my spreads, right? So this is a new beginning for you. Um, the Devil on the bottom of the deck. That would be you, Capricorn. <laughs> That's your major counter card. That's you. In the potential outcome, we have that King of Swords with the Ten of Cups and the Six of Swords. Yeah, the Six of Swords, again, is a card of moving forward or leaving or something behind. Right? 
And the, the thing about the Six of Swords, this card always talks about things getting better. So in the future, or when this person shows up in your life, things will get better. No matter how you're doing right now. <laughs> Alright, then the, the Ten of Cups in the middle is uh, the Happily Ever After card. It's a family card. It's one of the best cards when it comes to emotionally fulfilling relationships or marriages. This is, uh, yeah, the Happily Ever After card. Okay, so yeah, very dramatic reading. Uh, Capricorn, you're, you or, or them or both of you leaving your something or someone behind. But it's going to be worth it. It's definitely going to be worth it. Wow, Capricorn. So, yeah, you better hold on. It's going to be quite a ride. Okay. <laughs> really happy for you. Congratulations. Capricorn, if you are already married or if you're in a relationship that's better for you. Um, we have the Queen of Pentacles. We have the Page of Pentacles clarified by the Hangman. Then we have the Hierophant and the Sun on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a Taurus or a Leo. Um, I think you're in charge, <laughs> Capricorn. So yeah, the Queen of Pentacles, the first card that came out, that would be you. Okay, and uh, the Page of Pentacles, the next card over, you could be paying for something, right? Um, and uh, for some of you, uh, you could be paying for something for your house or education. It could be your education or your child's education. The Hierophant right next to the deck could... You know, this is a, a very traditional card, but every once in a while it comes through as a card of education, right? Then the Page of Pentacles could be that initial or down payment, or perhaps it's not really that much. You're and uh, you're shelling out a, a couple of bucks or a couple of queens or euros or whatever your currency <laughs> is. Okay. Um, yeah, the Sun. Um, on the bottom of the deck, um, you know, it could be dealing with a Leo, but the Sun uh, is the happiest card in the deck, and uh, it's also a card of clarity. And there's a kid riding a horse and the Sun card, right? The page could also be a child. Um, so perhaps you're paying for your child education for some of you. Perhaps your kid is graduating from high school and they're off to college and you need to start purchasing stuff. Um, or it could be like the first payment or the initial tuition payment or something like that. Okay. For others of you, it could be you getting engaged. Okay. <laughs> yeah, quite a turn, right? The Page of Pentacles could be something tangible, something you can touch. So a piece of jewelry in a small box would qualify. All right. The Hierophant in this case is a card of a commitment to marriage. Okay, so yeah, those are the two scenarios I see here, Capricorn. All right, cool. Let's see if anybody comes back from the past for you, Capricorn, in May. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be the most recent X. Uh, also, keep in mind, we'll have Mercury in retrograde for at least half of the month. And uh, this is when more X's than usual tend to resurface. So here's one of them. We got the King of Cups. We have uh, the Page of Pentacles clarified by the Seven of Swords. Uh, we have uh, the Seven of Wands clarified by the Three of Swords. And we have the Four of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Uh, you could be dealing with a Water Sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. Um, yeah, this King of Cups is going to make an attempt to lure you back in. Okay, and... Uh, I think the advice for you is to stay as far away from this person as possible. It's like this person is up to no good. They've got a very personal agenda. It's like they're almost feels like a revenge of some sort or something like that. Right? So yeah, the King of Cups, the first character, that's the person. Um, most likely a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, or somebody with a lot of water in their chart. They're coming in with the Page of Pentacles. Right, and um, as I was laying down the cards, I saw the Page of Pentacles, and I was like, "Oh, that that's good." But then the rest of the spread is just awful. Like seriously, right? Uh, the Page of Pentacles is clarified by the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords is a card of a deception, so they will make you an offer with that Page of Pentacles. But this is just an excuse. They are luring luring you back in, right? The Page of Wands is a bait, all right, and it could be tickets to a show, tickets to a game. It could be them, you know, reaching out to you, saying, Hey, um, I found something of yours at my place. Would you like it back? They will be very creative. That's how it feels. Whatever they offer you, whatever reason they come up with is a bait. The Seven of Swords is a cheater card. It's a card of a thief. It's a card of a deception. 
All right. The rest of the spread, I think this is you standing your ground and saying no. All right. The seven of wands, the next card over, this is you literally, you know, for defending yourself, fighting them off. And uh, the three of swords clarifying is what you're trying to avoid. Another broken heart. I'm sure they broke your heart in the past. And uh, um, for some of you, it's their intention to do that to you again. Or you just don't want to go back there with the three, with the... Uh, Seven of Wands, right? Then the fourth pen, Four of Cups on the bottom of the deck, this is a, a card of a rejection. So yeah, you're standing your ground, you're rejecting them, you're not falling for their BS, for their um, excuse, because uh, yeah, they're definitely up to no good, all right? Cool. Let's talk about your work, your business, and your finances, Capricorn. Uh, this month we have the Moon, um, the Seven of Cups, the Three of Wands, and the Ten of Wands on the bottom of the deck. I think you're going to be secretly looking at new options because you are fed up. Because you're tired, you don't want to work your butt off anymore. That's what it kind of feels like. You're going to be secretly looking for a new job or secretly looking for uh, ways to improve your uh, skill level so you could get out of there. Okay. Um, the Ten of Wands on the bottom of the deck is a card of a burden. Okay, it's a card of something that's tough on us, something that's taken a toll on us. So I think you've been working really hard. If this is your reading, then you have been <laughs> working really hard. Um, and uh, yeah, the moon with the seven of cups, the first two cards, I think this is you looking at options. The moon is a card of a secret, right? So you're not announcing it, you're not, you're keeping it to yourself. And with the seven of cups, you're looking at options, right? There is a silhouette in, of a person. You know, on, in the uh, left bottom corner of the Seven of Cups, that's you looking at your options. Those Seven Cups are your options, right? You could be looking for a new job, going to interviews, not uh, letting know, not letting your existing employer know you've been, you're doing that, right? And I think with the Three of Wands, um, you will find something. There's the Three of Wands is a card of somebody who made up their mind, somebody who made the decision. Um, and after that, there is no turning back. So in your mind, you're done. It's, it's just a matter of um, when, not if, you're going to be uh, departing. Once you have found a new job, once you've uh, taken a course or earned that certificate or something, so you could uh, apply for new jobs, you're out. You're going to be out of there. All right? Cool. Here's the advice or uh, word of wisdom for you, Capricorn, for the whole month of May. Um, we have the Fool clarified by the Lovers. Um, we have the Empress, the King of Swords, and the Sun on the bottom of the deck. Some of you already guessed what this advice is about, <laughs> Capricorn. You see that King of Swords right next to the deck? It's that same person as we saw in the new love spread, right? Um, the advice for you is to take a leap of faith, take a risk. And uh, it will pay off in a big, major way. Okay, so yeah, that's the advice. There is uh, four major arcana cards on the table, and uh, a minor arcana card, and uh, the King of Swords is that minor arcana card. The rest of the cards are all major, right? And these are amazing major arcana cards by themselves and especially together. I can't stress that enough. Let me explain, right? Uh, the fool, the first guy that came out, this is the advice itself. Take a leap of faith, take a risk, right? This is a different deck, by the way. Use different decks for different spreads. Same message, okay? Um, yeah, the lover is clarifying it. Uh, it's a card of a choice, right? So some of you are choosing between two people or some of you are choosing to take this leap of faith, right? The lovers could be a Gemini you're dealing with. But in my opinion, um, the lovers is uh, the best card when it comes to the actual love connection between two people. It's a card of a soulmate connection. It's a card of, um, you know, twin flame connection, if you believe in twin flames. And the lovers could be the love of your life. All right? Yeah. Uh, the sun on the bottom of the deck is the happiest card in the deck. <laughs> Plain and simple. It is the happiest card in the deck. And whenever the full card and the sun card come out in the same spread, I always point out the similarities between those two cards. In the right upper corner of the full card, we have the sun. Then we have the actual sun card with the sun in it. All right, then the gesture of the person in the full card and the kid riding the horse in the sun card. To me personally, this is um, an identical gesture. Also, to me, this is a gesture of a very happy individual. Okay, the empress in the middle, that would be you. 
<laughs> Capricorn. That's you. The Empress is a future wife or a future significant other figure or a future mother figure. Because we're talking about the future right now. Right? And uh, besides that, that's how they're going to be treating you or already treat you as the Empress, right? The way you deserve. The Empress does not require an introduction. Everybody knows who the Empress is. The Empress is being loved, cherished, being put up on a pedestal and all that good stuff. And besides that, the Empress is, you know, one of the most positive cards in the deck, right? The Empress is abundance in its purest form. So, uh, yeah, the advice for you is to go ahead, Capricorn. <laughs> Alright, so yes, that's what I have for you for this reading, for this month. If this video resonates with you, please like it. Please share and subscribe. And other than that, Capricorn, have an amazing May.